All right. In one hour, we're going to have our online Bible study, right? We're going to have our online Bible study. And we're going to talk about Romans 13. And it's some, some good stuff in Romans 13. But something that I noticed when I was looking at it, y'all, um, was verse 8, 9, and 10. And it's talking about love, owing owing people, right? Owing people uh, nothing except to love. Except to love, right? So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. My bad. Sorry about that, Joseph. You, you, everybody was hearing the echo. Okay, we heard the church say it's good. All right, cool. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Let's grow in Jesus' name. So Romans 13, 8 through 10 says this, guys. It says, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now let's stop. Let's pause right there. Okay. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to believers, to Christians, and of course, the Romans, right? In the Roman church, right? It says, Oh, no one anything except to love them, right? Because those who love fulfill the law. So what did I ask you guys a couple minutes ago? Are Christians under a law? Are we under a specific certain law? Are we expected by God to do certain things? Um, well, here it's, it's saying that we will fulfill the law if we what? If we love one another. Okay, so there's definitely mention of a law, right? Of a law, right? For the commandments, it says, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. So that's what Romans 13 says. Love is the fulfillment of the law. And um, if you've read the Old Testament, right? If you've read the Old Testament, you see that those laws that were mentioned, those commandments that were mentioned were, the, um, were part of the Ten Commandments. In the book of Exodus, given, given by God to Moses or through Moses to the people of Israel, to the nation of God, right? Cool? We understand that, right? Do we understand that love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit who believers, Christians, you and I, under grace, under the new covenant, have? We understand that, right? Love is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. All over the New Testament, you hear talk about us walking in the Spirit, walking by the Spirit, not walking according to the flesh. Walk by the Spirit and do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Make no provision for the flesh. He who walks in the, in the flesh cannot please God. That's what the New Testament says. For who? For Christians, right? So it's telling us what to do, what not to do. Those are laws. Those are instructions. Those are orders and commands because this is what happened, y'all. The covenant changed completely. From old covenant to new covenant. But the thing is that God didn't change. So whoever is under that covenant with God still is subject to God. That means God is still our boss. God is still our king. Our That's what we call Lord, right? The Lord Jesus Christ, right? Romans 8.2 says this. Fierce mentioned this. Um, For the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life, in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, we are under a law, a specific law. The If you answered yes at the beginning of this live stream, y'all, you were right. If you answered no, we're not under the law, you were wrong. Because Romans 8, 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So in Christ Jesus, we are still under a law. Not the law of Moses. That's not what I'm saying. Don't get it twisted. But we are under a law indeed in Christ, right? So for in that law is called the law of the spirit, the law of the spirit of life. Uh -huh. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, right? That law of sin and death, right? And in, in that whole context in Romans 8 and of course, Romans 7, Romans 6, Romans 5, Romans 4, it's talking about the law of Moses, 
People being slaves to the sin in their flesh and their flesh wanted to disobey the law of God or the law of Moses, the old covenant even more because flesh is that rebellious, right? And then it says that through believing in Jesus Christ, we can get our sins forgiven. We can be justified by God to God, right? We can be at peace with God, reconciled to God by himself, by his own body, right? And it says that we will be under grace. Why? Because we didn't have to find the animal to sacrifice. We didn't have to take the animal to the priest. We didn't have to do any of the things that the old covenant Jews in Israel had to do. If you read the book of Ex, uh, the, the book of uh, of uh, Exodus towards the end, Leviticus, of course, Numbers. If you read all those books in the Old Testament, you will see how many things God demanded of the Jews. A lot of rituals, a lot of cleansing, a lot of water purification. Even the priests, the priests had to do more than anybody. Priests had to do this, that. People had to take the animal, right? So we were free from that law, that old covenant law, where we had to bring a sacrifice year after year and find a priest and he would do it outside of the tabernacle and all this stuff. We're free from that law. That's being under grace. That's what being a Christian is. Why? We then once we're forgiven, it says we receive the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. That's God himself. Praise God, right? And this Holy Spirit in us, he is God in us, God with us. He is the Lord. That's why the Lord told his disciples, when I leave the gift, the helper, he's going to come. And it says, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. I never leave you or forsake you. Why? Because he, he, he was going to send his own spirit. So the Lord is always with us. He's within us, right? And it says in Romans 2 that we are under the law of the spirit of life. So I say all that to say, yes, Christians are under a law. Not the law of Moses given to the Jews, but we are under the law of the spirit of life, a.k.a. the law of Christ. What does that mean? I didn't know we were under the law. I thought it was just grace. You know, I do. I mess up here and there, but I'm still going to go to heaven one day. The Bible don't teach that, y'all. The Bible says we're justified, born again, just by faith in Christ Jesus. But it does not say that God's going to let people into his kingdom just because they believe or they confess. It says Jesus will come back one day and he will look for faith on the earth. And it says faith without works is dead. And it says that one day God's going to judge all people according to their works. That's actions, right? Why? I thought it was grace. Why? Because we were saved from the law of sin and death, the law of Moses. We were redeemed from that law, therefore redeemed from the curse of of that law and now we are in Christ his spirit is in us and that's why it says walk in the spirit bear the fruit of the spirit do not walk in the works of the flesh because the works of the flesh are the opposite of the fruit of the spirit and it says in Galatians 5 that if you walk in the works of the flesh you will not inherit the kingdom of God so that correlates with the whole God judging us according to our works then yes we are under a law not the law of Moses but the law of Christ and Christ is greater he's the way Amen. Joseph said we have to repent and live our life for him. Um, they're asking about the Torah. Okay, okay, okay. Erica said, man, you explained this in a way I never could. Priest, pastor, amen. Also, praise God. There's more. So our duty, guys, Christians, you and I, as being people under a law, the law of Christ, as being people who are under the new covenant, but the same God. So that same God demands obedience. That same God is still our boss. That same God still has the right and the authority to tell us what to do, what not to do, and to tell us we can't go into his kingdom if we didn't please him. That's still Bible. That's New Testament. Being, be, being in Christ doesn't change the fact that God has demands of holiness and righteousness from his people. You, you see that all in the New Testament. I'm telling you. Our duty is now to what? What's our duty? What's our duty, y'all? Our duty is to walk in the Spirit. That's why it says those who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. That's why it says that Jesus was led by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. <laughs> Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. Spirit told him. Jesus only heard what he heard the Father say. Spirit told him. Who, he, who, who did he give us? The gift of the Spirit. 
right? If we don't bear the fruit of the Spirit in ways such as loving, right? Because according to Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love. That's the first fruit that's listed. It's, it's, it's a whole lot of fruit, but that's the first, love, right? If we don't bear the fruit of the Spirit in ways such as loving, then we are not obeying Christ's law. So what, so, so, so what did we read in the beginning? That if you love your neighbor, you fulfill the law, right? So what's the opposite of that? If you don't love your neighbor, you're not fulfilling the law. So what are you walking in? The flesh. Galatians 5 says, he who walks according to the flesh, what, he, he who does the works of the flesh, what? Will not inherit eternal life. So there's, there's demands here in Christianity, y'all. There, there's things that God expects from us. We are under the law. Not the law of Moses, but the law of Christ. The law of the spirit of life. Amen. Um, I go live on YouTube. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, right now, I'm testing to see if I can go live on Facebook and Instagram. Looks like it's working. Um, so Christine asked that. Uh, and every Tuesday night and Thursday night, guys, we have an online Bible study and we do live stream. If you want to be part of it and ask questions and show your face and have conversation, you can actually get on Zoom. You got to sign up on it. The, the link is in the bio. But if you don't want to, if you don't want to be in there, interact and engage on Zoom, you can just watch the live stream on YouTube and Facebook. That's every Tuesday night, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Tuesday nights we do the Gospels: Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the Book of Acts. Um, Thursday nights we do a letter. That's Romans, First Corinthians, Jude, John, First, uh, First John, Second John, stuff like that, right? So yeah, I, we live stream a lot, twice a week at least. So if we don't bear the fruit of the Spirit in ways such as loving, then we're not obeying the the, the law of Christ, right? There's such thing as not obeying Christ. Put it how you want to put it. We can say we're under grace because we are. We can say we're in the new covenant because we are. We can say we're Christians, not Israelites or not Jews, not people under the old covenant because we're not. We can say that, right? We can say that. But that does not negate the fact that we still have a Lord and we're still under the law of the spirit of life. And we still. Jesus still commanded us to do things. When Jesus said, follow me, y'all think, what y'all think he was, he was talking about? He's saying, become my student and do as I tell you. There's a scripture, guys, in the life and the teachings of Jesus where Jesus told his disciples, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? There's a problem when somebody is your Lord, but you're not obeying them. That doesn't seem right. Being under grace or not, new covenant or not, Christianity, New Testament or not, that just doesn't make sense. We're under the law of Christ, under the law of the spirit of life, right? We are under the law of God expecting and commanding us to walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh. That's why we're supposed to bear the fruit of the spirit. That's why it says faith without works is dead. Because if we don't have works, that means we're not walking in the spirit. That means our faith is useless. That means it's just as if we were never born again. Judgment is still coming. I, I don't think there's a lot of Christians who understand this, man. I don't think a lot of Christians understand this. Jews were following Moses. Really. God gave the laws to, of, uh, uh, to, to the nation of Israel. He gave it to them through Moses. The Bible talks about Israel, people under the old covenant. They were following Moses. Jesus said that they had Moses. Israel had Moses. They were followers of Moses. Whatever Moses said, they heard him. They listened to him. They obeyed him. Or they, uh, they were supposed to, at least. That's why Moses prophesied that one day somebody would come and he was going to be the one that Israel would have to hear and listen to. And that somebody was Jesus. That's why when Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses was present and, um, and, uh, and Elijah was pre present. The law and the prophets, two witnesses. What? Witnessing of the Father saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. Hear him. He's fulfilling the prophecy. Jesus is the one everybody will need to listen to in order to be right with God. We Just like people were followers of Moses, we're supposed to be followers of Jesus. Just like people were under the law of Moses, we're supposed to be under the law of Christ. Just like people were supposed to obey the commandments of the old covenant, we're supposed to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit in order to inherit eternal life. That's why it says, he who works the works of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom. It makes sense, right? 
Same God. He's still in authority. He's still the one in charge, right? Holy Spirit. So it doesn't make to sense for us to turn just because life. we're in That's why it says new covenant works. The that words now we don't have to obey not anybody it. or anything, kingdom. or nothing's expected no, of us. Right? We don't have a king. Same we don't God. Have a Lord. We He's don't still have an authority. We don't have a He's still the we one in charge, right? Right? Holy Spirit. 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 Amen. Let's grow. So Jesus said, "Follow me." What does that mean? The opposite of following Moses. You obeyed his commandments. Now obey mine. That's why Jesus still had commandments. Jesus said, "Love." Love your neighbor. Forgive as you've been forgiven. <laughs> Preach the gospel to every creature. Baptize them in my name. Teach them what I taught you. Come on. That's why from, from the book of Acts all the way to Revelation, there's instructions, there's commands to the church, and there's repercussions in the lives of those who didn't obey them because they thought, oh, we're not under the law of Moses. That means we have no master. We're just going to go to heaven no matter what, wrong. We're st we, we're under the master. We're followers of somebody. It's not Moses anymore. It's Jesus. And Jesus expects us to live a certain way. That's why in the book of Revelation, a prophecy of things to come, he's spitting out whole churches. You're lukewarm. I don't like how you taste. I don't like how you live in. Jesus said, many will come to me, say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do these things in your name? In, in, in whose name? In his name. That means they were confessing him. That means they were the type of people that we would call Christians. And, he, and he's going to say to them, depart, I never knew you, you doer of iniquity. You what of iniquity? You confessor of iniquity? You believer of iniquity? No, you doer of iniquity. You worker of iniquity. So God cares about how we live and why? Because he is still in charge. We're, we're still supposed to be people who obey commandments, laws, not the law of Moses, the law of the spirit. Amen. Y'all see what I'm saying? Erica said, I try to tell people and they accuse me of not following Jesus' death and resurrection to be enough. I get called legalistic for saying these things. <laughs> Amen. Fearson said, there's a way that seems right to a man by the end is death. That's right. The wages of sin is death. Okay. And those wages did not end, did not stop when Jesus came. The way to being right with God changed, which became Christ. And you see, this is the thing. Jesus became the lamb, okay, the sacrifice and the high priest. That's what changed. No longer having to follow the, the law of Moses changed to now having to follow the instructions and teachings of Jesus Christ. How do we do that? By the flesh? No, because it will also almost be the same as the Israelites with the law of Moses. The flesh will cause us to rebel more. Now we have the spirit and we can bear the fruit of the spirit. So now we can do it by walking in the spirit. Do what? Obey the law of Moses? No, obey the laws of Christ, which just like Romans 13 described, they still involve the first 10 commandments because those have to do with loving people, loving your neighbor, not committing adultery, um, you know, honoring your parents, not being a false witness, not stealing, not killing. Those things still apply. Why? Because they're a part of what Jesus described as love, right? And, and love is a fruit of the spirit. Amen. And we're supposed to be walking in the spirit. Why? We're under the law of the spirit of life. Does that make sense, y'all? Following Christ is obeying good teach is obeying his teachings, is obeying his commandments, is obeying his instructions. That's what following Christ is, y'all. So when we talk about we're followers of Christ, we're not saying we're just people who believe Jesus existed and now we go to church and we read the Bible. No, it, it means today. What it meant back in those days of old when people considered themselves Jews under the law of Moses. They were following Moses and whatever Moses said to do, that was law. That's, that, that's how they had to live. It's the same thing with us as Christians. We call ourselves followers of Christ. Whatever Jesus taught, that's how we're supposed to live. Whatever Jesus taught through the apostle Peter, through the apostle Paul, through the apostle John, through James... That's how we're supposed to live. Whatever Jesus said in the, in, 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 in the um, revelation or vision he gave to the apostle John in the book of Revelation, that's how we're supposed to live. Why? Because even though we're under a new covenant, we're still under a law, the law of Christ, the law of the spirit of life. And we still have a Lord, which is Jesus. And he and, and lords give orders. And people who don't follow the orders of lords don't get allowed into his kingdom. Let's grow. That's the Come on, man. That's the gospel. You like that? Leave a like, leave a comment, share this video. I don't know if you can share this um, on Instagram, but share this video. Hopefully this helps somebody.
Let's look at the comments. What do you guys think about this? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's another thing. I appreciate you saying that um, faith in him movement. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's another good one. He also said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say, right? It's 620. Four, in 40 minutes, y'all, we're going live on Zoom, Facebook, and um, YouTube for our online Bible studies. We're doing the book of Romans today, Romans chapter 13, um, which is what I talked about just now um, in this live stream. But we're going to do a whole Bible study on Romans 13, line by line, word by word, verse by verse. We're going to talk about it. Get into where we do this every Tuesday and Thursday. So I invite all of y'all who are watching to our online Bible study at 7 p.m. That's in 40 minutes because I'm Eastern time. Okay. My wife, Samantha, said this is good. What's up, baby? She said this is good. Looking forward to the Bible study tonight. Yeah, Franklin, I'll see you tonight at the Bible study, man. Um, Erica has a question. She said, why do more Christians not understand this, in your opinion? Is it because they don't want to believe it or no one teaches it? No one's teaching it. Um, you know, in my opinion, I don't want to sound like I know it all and stuff like that because it, I'm, I'm, listen, it took me a while because I was just getting what I was taught. And then when I started learning on my own, I got a lot of stuff right, but then I also missed a few things too. Um, but over the years, you know, as, as I keep reading and keep asking the Lord for wisdom and keep humbling myself, because you got you to gotta be humble for, for the Lord to teach you because you got to say, okay, you know, I'm not as smart as I think um, in, in, in the preachings that I like, that sound entertaining and, and, and good. And my favorite preacher, he might be wrong too. So let me just, Lord, teach me. So over the years, I've been learning this more and more, especially, you know, the last couple of years, um, the Lord's been showing me like, hey, you know, you're a Christian, but just because you have faith and confess, that doesn't mean you're going to heaven one day. The Lord's, the Bible says we're born again through faith in Christ alone. We're saved by grace alone. That's us being forgiven initially and being born again, being baptized, receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit. But as far as going to heaven or entering the kingdom of God, living forever and eternity and not in the lake of fire, the Bible has, says that Bible doesn't say that has anything to do with with our faith or confession. The Bible says that has to do with the Lord's judgment if he allows us or not. And it says he's going to judge us according to our works, to our actions, to our conduct, not to our confession. That's why it says faith without works is dead. So we got to we got to we got to pay real good attention to what scripture's teaching, y'all, not to the stuff that sounds good and easy and, and worthy of celebration. It was easy to get born again. But entering the kingdom of God, that's a whole different thing. Jesus said the road is narrow. It's not broad. The road is broad and wide to destruction. That's that's the hell. The, the road to his kingdom is broad. Paul said, um, uh, without much affliction or sufferings or persecution, uh, we will not enter the kingdom of God. So you enter the kingdom of God through, through, through a tough, a tough road. It's a rough path. You hear me? Praise God. Uh, what's up, Nathan? Good to see you on here, man. Good to see you on here. Me and Nathan went to um, Bible college together back in uh, 2013, 2014. Um, and I went to a Christian university after that. Um, I'm about to be done. Get my master's degree. No more school. Man, some people get their doctorates and stuff like that. Man, after after my master's, I'm like, no, I ain't, I ain't going to school no more. I'm going I'm to hang up this degree and just preach the gospel because it's just very time consuming. It's very expensive, but nah, yeah, I'm done after this master's, man. I'm done. <laughs> you ain't going to see me in school no more. I am done, praise God. I'm new to this. I just started reading the Bible these past couple of months, but these Bible studies are really helping me right now. Praise God, Franklin. That's awesome, man. Great to hear, man. Great to hear, man. Keep growing. Keep hungering for truth, for righteousness, and and, uh, and and for the knowledge of God's will, man. We got to know what God's will is in order to live in it, right? Um, Nathan said, I'm trying to do apologetics at ORU. Man, that sounds that sounds tough, man. But uh, I know a lot of a lot of unbelievers have uh, have come to, to faith in Christ through apologetics. So so that's pretty good. You could use apologetics for for evangelism, man. That's awesome. Praise God. Any Spanish classes? Uh-oh. Somebody asked if we had any, any Spanish Bible um, studies. 
whoever has that, um, those are coming. Those are coming soon. I don't know how soon, but those are coming. You know, we're going to start some Spanish online Bible studies uh, probably on Wednesdays, Wednesday nights. So Tuesday nights, we're going to have the Gospels Bible study in the book of Acts. Wednesdays, we'll have Spanish Bible study. And then Thursdays, we'll have letters Bible study, like Romans to Revelation Bible study, as we're doing now already. So we're hoping to add the Spanish Bible studies on Wednesday soon, but I'm not too sure when. Um, I'll, I'll be leading those. I speak Spanish for, for those who don't know. Um, did you be, do you believe once saved, always saved? No. Faith in him movement. No. Basically, this whole Bible study was me was me talking about not believing in that. <laughs> or not this whole Bible study, this whole live stream. I definitely do not believe in that. There's too much talk in the New Testament about departing from the faith, right? Um, faith without works is dead. Um Man, what else? He's going to judge us according to our works. Uh, uh, many will come to me saying, Lord, Lord, did he not do these things in your name? Uh, Depart from me. I never knew you, doer of iniquity. So knowing him and, 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 and doing his, his uh, being a doer of the word, keeping his, his instructions, his commandments has to do with us entering heaven, right? Entering his kingdom. So it's, it's, it's very iffy. Uh, the Bible says he who endures to the end will be saved. Uh-oh, you see, that changes the dialogue. Um, somebody said faith alone, but whatever it is, genuine faith, it produces works. If you truly believe. Uh, no, I, I believe that there's a lot of Christians in this world. And just because they have real faith in Christ doesn't mean they're going to live right. The Bible said, the Bible doesn't say, oh, you're a Christian, you're going to live right. You're going to be transformed. You're going to do the will of God. No, the Bible says, if you love God, you will keep his commandments. The Bible says, if you love God, that means you know him. If you don't love, you don't know him because he's love. The Bible says that Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Abide in me, you will bear much fruit. The Bible says, if you deny yourself, right? If you submit to God, resist the devil, right? The Bible says, um, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? The Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the reason there's a lot of Christians who are not living right, it's not because they're not really saved. You know, they don't have real genuine faith. It's because they haven't been renewing their minds. They don't really love God. They haven't been spending time with God. They haven't been invested in their growth and transformation, you know, and that's just, that's very obvious in scripture. So yeah, I definitely don't believe that once say you always saved or if you made it to heaven, you were supposed to. If you didn't make it to heaven, you're not supposed to. I don't believe in that. And if, if you're part of our Bible studies, man, you will see why. We, we went through the whole book of John already. We went through the whole book of 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Titus, uh, 2 Thessalonians. Uh, we're about to finish Matthew. You will see. You will see how serious it is to be a Christian. You got to continue in the faith. It says, he who endures to the end will be saved. Okay? Amen? I'm out of here because I only got 30 minutes between now and the Bible study. So, um even Satan believes in, in God and he's not going to heaven. Right. You know, the Bible says in the book, book, book of James, I think it's James 2. Even the demons believe. You're applauding because you believe in God. That don't mean nothing. Even demons believe. <laughs> but demons don't live right. <laughs> Faith with works. You will be judged according to your works. That's why it says we've been saved to good works. Bear good fruit. It says bear fruit to God. It says the tree that doesn't bear fruit will be cut off. The branch will be cut off and thrown into the fire. That's Jesus' parables clearly pointing to hell. And people who are branches, right? Romans says we, we, we were branches grafted in. Just because you're grafted in don't mean you're not going to hell because Jesus said branches that don't bear fruit get thrown into the fire. Come on. We just got to put all these scriptures together, y'all. Let's grow. Um, I'm, I'm out of here. Somebody's uh, Somebody's out here trying to argue somebody's out here um you know uh, talking about <laughs> by by grace alone by grace alone you get born again but the bible says in order to enter the kingdom of god you have to what not w walk in the works of the flesh and what what else what else have the works that he's going to approve that's why it says faith without works is dead okay all that christ all that change in Christianity was the covenant, y'all. Just watch, watch this live stream. I'm going to post it. I'm going to save it. Watch it from the beginning. You're going to understand what I'm saying to you is Bible. The covenant changed. 
the priest changed, the lamb changed, the animal sacrifice changed. Moses is no longer the one we follow. It's Jesus that changed. But God is the same. And what a Lord demands, what a king demands is still obedience. Just watch it. Love y'all. Y'all have a good night. Um, love y'all. May y'all have a good night. Let's grow. Man, Jesus is Lord, man. And if Jesus is Lord, let's stop saying it. Let's start acting like it. Let's follow him with works, right? And when I say works, I don't mean I got to pray in order to get to heaven. I got to read in order to get to heaven. That's not what I'm talking about. When I say works, I'm talking about what I just read, Romans 13. Love, loving your neighbor, bearing the fruit of the spirit. Those are the works he's going to be looking for, right? That's why he said, he prophesied that when people didn't give somebody food to eat, when somebody didn't visit somebody, in when somebody didn't do this, they didn't do it to the Lord. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus gave us the whole rundown. We'll just be, you know, too stuck on people's teachings to, to, to see it, to, to, to admit it, man. Or we just be too stuck in our sins. Yeah, I confess Jesus. I'm going to go to heaven. All right. You know. All right. Love y'all, man. Y'all have a good night.